Now that you had my spiel on building your first set list uh, and first set, uh, we're going to get a word from Bird. He always likes to chime in. So what, what do you uh, got to contribute to that section? Well, I would just like to, first and foremost, as as you get up and you, you start doing more time, it's just about being comfortable, being being well, comfortable in front of people and, and sharing what's going on in your mind. And just so you know, you may not get any laughs, but don't worry about that. Here's the deal. When, you, when you're coming up with premise, um, it can come from any, it just be the, the inner thoughts. Like you're sitting alone quietly or someone's yelling at you or you listen to a song, you get a premise, write it down. What's the question? Or what's your, what's your, what do you believe? And then explain it, just explain it. So if your question is how many, how many, pieces of toilet paper is appropriate to use for a standard restroom break that can be and then you just get into specifics am i right on that well yeah i think that's that's how a lot of jokes happen naturally in conversation when i was first starting stand up i was a bartender so how i wrote jokes was i would be at the bar i would be having a conversation with a customer uh, i would that conversation would turn into a laugh and then I would kind of play it back in my head, like, what did I say that triggered the laugh? And then allow our conversation prior to be the premise. And then I'd take, this was in 2003, uh, prior to smartphones. So I would take like a napkin, a bar napkin, and I would write the joke down, a sentence or two. That was the joke. And then I would, uh, I would take that, put it in my pocket. Then when I would go home, I would take that piece of paper uh, open up my computer and just write whatever the premise was, whatever, whether I, where I got the laugh, and I would just write around it. Other ideas, other joke ideas, and maybe one napkin turned into two or three paragraphs. Now, th then you have to refine that down to a joke, and it's really h a good joke, and it's really hard to do that without an audience because um, until you get really good at stand-up, it's hard to write a joke and know it's going to work. Um, and even for people that are really, really good at stand-up, they write a joke, think it's good enough to at least say in front of an audience full of people, and it's not funny. It happens. Sometimes it's just for us. So the idea is to take those broader, fatter jokes uh, which still have all the extra words and concepts that might not end up there, and get them in front of an audience as soon as possible. That audience could just be your girlfriend. That audience could be your boyfriend. That audience could be your best friend. It could be your mom. It could be your dad. It could be your kid. Uh, and see where the laugh points are. See what makes them smile. Maybe they won't die laughing. They might not you know, change your oil because you were so amazing, but you might see, oh, yeah, they giggled at that. Okay. They didn't think that was that funny. Let me get rid of that. And then focus. And then try and get the most focused version of it on a stage uh, as, as soon as possible. Um, an open mic, preferably, not anywhere you're being judged, but a place where other artists understand that we're all figuring it out. Once you do that, um, you, know, you continue to tighten it on your own time. Um, me personally... I didn't have that opportunity because my first time was at the Pittsburgh Improv in front of 350 people, and I didn't understand that you were supposed to go to Mike's and, and rehearse it in front of your friends and do all that because I wasn't lucky enough to be able to take this class in 2003. Uh, but you guys are. So I'm telling you, try it out with any audience first. Uh, right now, social media is a great audience to try out material. Um, and to see if a premise is funny before you uh, assign that effort to the limited time you're going to get on an actual stage with an actual microphone with other people in the room. So be efficient uh, with that, and you'll, you'll, be, you'll be most well served. So an economy of words and an economy of movement, and also you got to have thick skin. When you go to these clubs and you're running your premises and then your punchlines, uh, what you want to do is you want to also remember that they're there doing the same thing and then look at what's working for them. If you see someone growing uh, in their, in how they're proficient on stage with their use of body and manner, mannerisms as well as joke construction, then, then network with them. There's no right or wrong to you. And that's kind of what we're doing here is we're telling you, look, be comfortable with who you are, get up there, work, network, be, be good, be compatible with people. And you're going to, you're going to take 
take what we're learning or what we're teaching here and learn because this is it's truly leaps and bounds over anything that's out there. Right. So so let's say you're at an open mic, whether it's in Denver, it's in San Diego, it's in Los Angeles, it's in Washington, it's in New York, it's in D.C., Pittsburgh. They're all over the country. It's a booming comedy market. You're at an open mic. There's 30 comedians in the audience and one table of just regular Joes who came in off the street because they had nothing to do and wanted to come see some, some people chase their dreams. When you're telling your jokes, look to see if those two people are laughing. What the comedians are doing uh, is damn near irrelevant. Uh, if you are crushing at an open mic in front of a bunch of other comedians, you are either A, a professional uh, who is just farting around and wants to have some fun or B, doing it wrong because you're writing jokes that make comedians at open mics laugh, not people who are going out to spend their Friday night uh, you know, drinking overpriced beer and eating overpriced nachos. You picking up what I'm putting down? I'm picking up what you're putting down. That's very important that you pick up what I put down because if you don't, we're in an awkward situation. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I kind of alluded to that, but everybody has bad sets, and open mics particularly are built for bad sets. That's kind of what you do there. It's the gym. It's not the arena. So you're going there not to be seen, but to put in the work. Uh, every time you touch a microphone, every time you see the different ways that the reverb uh, reacts to your mouth, uh, every time you get to make eye contact with an audience member and feel lights, you're acclimating yourself to an environment in which you need to be comfortable. And one of the most important things, an exercise you can do at an open mic, is walk on stage, take the mic out of the mic stand, Put the mic in front of your mouth and say nothing and look at your watch for 15 seconds, not two seconds, not three seconds, 15 and tough it out. It might feel awkward. You might be having all types of panicky thoughts in your head about, oh my God, these people hate me or I'm not funny or I'm such a loser. None of it matters. Get comfortable with silence. Silence is your friend. Silence means people are paying attention. Silence means whatever you say next is much more valuable. It's when people are gossiping or, 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 or not even making eye contact. And the best way to get somebody to make eye contact with you is to make eye contact with them. And it doesn't require words. Eye contact is a very, very powerful uh, tool in stand-up comedy. I would argue that it is the most important tool. And additionally, uh, you should know that you're uh, when he talked about having a tough set or having a bad set, it's called bombing. I am a master at carpet bombing, but here's the deal. <laughs> here's the deal. You have to bomb in order to soar. You do. Right. And, and you're going to have more chances to learn from your sets where you're not doing well than the ones where you are doing well. But the stuff that you do well, you will remember. Believe that. If you want to understand how open mics are supposed to work, uh, go on your favorite digital platform for films and get Happy Gilmore and watch the scene where Happy Gilmore is in the batting cage just taking balls to the chest. And he, go, he goes, what are you doing? He goes, I'm getting ready for hockey season. He's toughening up. That's what open mics are. You're taking balls to the chest. Uh, and that's just how it bees. Get, get uncomfortable. Get comfortable being uncomfortable because once you're comfortable being uncomfortable you can do anything 